This is from Fox News. An Alabama woman with two uteruses is pregnant with twins, one in each womb. <laughs> that's a one, in case you're wondering, that's a one in 50 million chance. Oh, boy. <laughs> two uteruses. Wow. Just 17 when she learned out she had a double uterus. Yeah, that's a thing. 15 years later, the Alabama woman got a second shock. She's pregnant with twins, one in each uterus. Oh, God, they're both going out the same exit, though. Damn. Fox Digital News spoke to the 32-year-old mother and fitness coach. She already has three kids, and she told them about the extremely rare pregnancy. Her condition affects only about 0.3% of the entire population. Wow. The uteri are the size of one split in half. That's amazing. So, yeah, yeah, two uteruses, twins, but they uh, they have their own separate apartments. I hope they don't grow up to be... You know, like uh, self-entitled little shits like my kids are. You, But looking at them, you would think that they grew up in separate apartments. Nay, they, they did not. No, no. They're not twins, but, you know, one got the used apartment. But still, life ain't fair, okay? Life is not fair. I mean, look, all the transgender people out there, I bet they're pissed at her. It's like, great. I get the transition and all that. My genetics, my chromosomes are still the same. That'll never change. And this lady has two uteruses. I know. I, I, I do feel for you. Life is not fair. Def Leppard's drummer only has one arm. Motley Crue's drummer has three. Welcome to No Disclosure. This podcast is brought to you by Asylum 817 Productions, Spotify, and DistroKid. This podcast is where we go on the news, see what's happening in the world, and based like fine, expensive turkeys in the sheer audacity and craziness that is our news media. Episode 201. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that's crazy. I was so excited to do episode 200, man. I I, <laughs> I just can't believe it. I'm, I'm still in shock. So what do we got now, huh? This is from canoe.com. <laughs> the URL is hilarious. Canoe.com slash news slash world slash ouch. They have a category on canoe.com for news about ouches. I can't wait to see what this article is about. <laughs> Be a good one, come on. Oh, and here it is. Uh, ouch. Porn star's pet. What? Porn star's pet python bites partner's penis. That's a shitty day at work. Man, I'm never gonna fucking complain again. At least a python didn't bite me on my uh, on my whacker. That part that couldn't have been in the script. It's as horrific as you might have guessed. Her partner was attacked in the nethers by a python. Oh my god! I want to introduce you to Betty. She's my Centralian carpet python, eight feet long. I never had an issue with her biting or anything until today, she said in a recent Instagram video that shows the snake wrapped around her neck. Fresh penis meat in its stomach. <laughs> and a pal just filmed some sexy content together when things turned well the opposite of that. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, Canoe. <laughs> Depends on who you are. So earlier... <laughs> uh, sexy is relative, okay? Ask Ed Gein what sexy is. and then <laughs> So early, <laughs> that went darker real quick. I had a friend over. We shot a video. Friend, okay. Once we were finished doing that, he jumped into the shower. But he did mention he wanted to hold my pet snake afterwards. I bet you went to regret that shit, didn't you? Let's turn up my volume a little bit. I'm. Yeah, it's kind of kind of meh. There we go. My volume sucked. I don't know what the hell was going on there. Now what? Now what's going to be cool is I'm going to have like this uh, portion of the podcast where, you know, the volume ain't shit, and then it's going to spike. That's going to be fun. I love, I love mixing my own mistakes. Anyway, let's get back to it, damn it. So, uh, yeah, Python, bit him in the whacker. That sucks. Ooh, she's got other p pictures on her Instagram. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'll get distracted. This will be a two-hour-long show. No, it won't. <laughs> be about four and a half minutes. Debello came out of the shower and placed the snake around her friend's neck before heading to the bathroom. Uh, heard a scream. 
turn around, see that Betty is holding on to his private parts. He's trying to pull her off of it. No, 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 no. Don't do that. If something bites you on the wiener, you don't pull, you pry. You don't pull, you pry. Good. That's food for thought there. Say it with me now. You get bit in the wiener and it won't let go. You don't pull, you pry. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna lose you're gonna end up losing more than your pride if you try to pull something off. And I'm just saying, use common sense, okay? Even in the worst of situations, you gotta keep your head. <laughs> this is also from Canoe. Oh, cool. Work all right. If it's good as the last one, I'm in. Funeral worker accused of tampering with dead man's sex doll. What? Funeral worker accused of tampering with dead man's sex doll. I have a lot of questions. Actually, yeah, I do. <laughs> and every time, like for every second that passes I'm sitting here, I kind of have more of them. Tampering with a dead man's sex doll. Okay. is a funeral worker, right? I mean, do they have access to somebody's belongings? Did the guy die with his sex doll? Uh, was he surgically grafted to it? I mean, do funeral, uh, do they even have access to a person's personal shit? You know, like that? I, I don't understand. Did he sneak into the guy's house and take it? Okay. Photos of the scene were taken by the coroner. The man's family was notified. Mortuary Services Company Mid-America First Call was contacted to collect a body from a bed and take it to the morgue. Oh. Okay. So, in order to make the article heading make a little bit more fucking sense, Canoe, you could have said morgue worker or something. Don't say funeral. Because, granted, it did make me click on it. So, really, you did succeed. But this is dishonest shit. And it's kind of confusing. You should have said morgue worker, because I got to wondering. Uh, if this guy's just a funeral worker, how did he get access uh, to something as sensitive as a man's, you know. <laughs> two employees in America. Okay, well, blah, 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 blah. One of the two workers came back in the building later that day and asked to collect the sex doll on behalf of the police so it could be swabbed for a biopsy. Uh, I don't think you understand the, uh, <laughs> really? Really? You went through school, you did everything that you had to do to be in this field, which isn't easy. And th that's not how biopsies work, dude. <laughs> Even I know that. The building's management refused to allow the worker back inside the apartment. Yeah, naturally. They're probably like, get the fuck out of here. Police were then called about the odd request <laughs> by the body transporter after the man threatened to get a search warrant. No, man, he really wanted to fuck this thing, didn't he? Damn. As soon as he saw it, he was in love. Getting the body out of there, and he looks over, and then he notices. He notices the doll in the corner, and it notices him. Their eyes lock. His, full of lust, animal-like, yet loving and caring, wanting to ravage it, yet at the same time, fall madly in love into a pit of affection to where he will never escape. And its eyes, it's cold, blank, soulless, and inanimate, wanting, moist and ready. They're ready to go. A romance for the ages, and he knows it. He will do anything, absolutely anything, to tap that shit. <laughs> I took that really far, but this is gross. This is weird. He just, I mean, he just had to have this thing. Investigators returned to the unit and found the scene had been disturbed. The doll appeared to have been altered near the thigh area. Dude, what is fucking wrong with you? It's a fuck. it's just a fucking sex doll. It's not Charlize Theron, you know? You're, just go get another one. The court document stated something had rubbed the inner thighs and the doll was sticky to the touch. Ah. Oh. You had to say that in the article. Ryan Smith, grown-ass man, 41, was arrested and charged with burglary, criminal trespassing, and tampering with physical evidence. Justin Dalton, the owner of uh, Mid-America First Call, said he was made aware of the man's arrest hours later. He was not on the clock when the incident occurred, but he was terminated. Good. You don't... <laughs> it just goes without saying. You're going to have to terminate the guy. You got to save face. You got to not look like a fucking freakazoid yourself. Don't mention that he was off the clock. That's unnecessary. This is from... How do you say that? Engadget? 
E N G A D G E T. Gadget. Yeah, that's Gadget. N Gadget. That's a stupid name for a website. Oh my god. What fucking idiot came up with that? Usually when you create something like a brand name or whatever, have something that's not only easy to spell but per- fucking pronounceable. God, what a stupid end gadget, really? What is wrong with you people? Self-proclaiming what? <laughs> <laughs> An article like this, okay. And gadget, you are immediately redeemed. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you have earned you've earned your respect back. Why? They have an article up here on their main page, actually. Self-proclaimed gay furry hackers breach nuclear lab. <laughs> this kind of makes me warm and fuzzy. I don't know why. The nuclear researcher Hub Idaho National Laboratory, INL, confirmed that it fell victim to a data breach on Tuesday. A group of self-proclaimed gay furry hackers. (laughs) That's great. Took responsibility for the attack and claimed they access sensitive employee data like social security numbers, home addresses, and more subserious shit. But their name is fucking awesome. (laughs) That's terrific. (laughs) High profile. That's a big one. I know hasn't yet responded to in in gadgets. I still can't say that. That's a shitty name, guys. Request for comment. A spokesperson confirmed the breach to EastIdahoNews.com. Uh, Idaho National Laboratory determined that it was the target of cybersecurity data breach. Yeah, no joke. But they <laughs> they called themselves gay furry hackers. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> I mean, rule of thumb is if you're smart enough to you know, hack something of this caliber, you're pretty damn good. You're pretty damn smart. So, um, yeah, I mean, you're right about the hackers thing. But if it was me, I would try to throw the authorities off my trail. So gay and furry, <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty creative. I, I like it. I like it. Do we have another one? Oh, it's from YDR. You guys, is Engadget and YDR, you guys almost have an identical website. That's spooky. You fooled me. That's weird. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's stealing, huh? Uh, you guys, whoa, who do you, who do you think you are? The New York Times? It's from the York Daily Record. Police shot fired after golden shower incident at a York hotel. One is charged with prostitution. Wh- what? What's going on here? <laughs> uh, do I want to know? I don't know if we should read this. (laughs) Northern York County's regional police allege a Marion, a Marion, a Marion, who had a paid sexual encounter with a woman at a motel along Route 30 fired a shot at her vehicle early Sunday morning, according to a news release. Officers responded to a shot fired call at the motel in Manchester Township and spoke with 34-year-old Brittany Abdelgui, I can't pronounce that, of the York area, police news release and court records state. Okay, tell me about the, let's get to the money shot here. Tell me what's going on. What, what's, what, uh, I want to learn about what the fuck Golden Shower has to do with it. Um, okay, paid, this is a, this is a long article! Uh... Explained that she had a paid sexual encounter with a man at the motel. She agreed to urinate on him. Okay, great. Um, Okay, well, let's get to the shot fired part. This is getting weird. I mean, weirder than you would... uh, (laughs) Okay, you know what I mean. Uh, Fired one shot as... What he approached... Wait a minute. Okay, okay, okay. So she was getting ready to leave. He approached her with a handgun, fired a shot in the air. She drove out of the parking lot. Damn, that's a hell of a day that you had. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Is this a day in the life thing for you, or is this is this kind of a wild one? Because if so, my dreams of being a high-profile hooker, not going to happen. No, I'm not into it anymore. Thank you. That's fucking, that's fucking crazy. Is this, a, is this a normal day for you? Because I hear, you know, uh, uh, you see on TV and you hear, you know, prostitutas, you know, talking about shit like that, soft white underbelly, you know, YouTube channels and shit like that. This is normal for you? Damn. This sounds like, (laughs) it's pretty fucking wild. I don't know if my ticker, I don't know if my fucking heart can handle this kind of excitement, even probably even a couple times in my life. 
I don't even know where to start. Yeah, the guy's caught $5,000 bail, blah, 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 blah. But damn, you're a prostitute, number one, which is extremely dangerous. And number two, you know, it just goes without saying. You're, you got a loaded fucking bomb, you know what I mean? Fuck, end up getting fucking AIDS or some shit, which is dangerous as hell. Illegal as fuck. So if you get caught, you know, you're gone. And <laughs> the guy wants you to pee pee on him, which is, that's the point where I'm walking. Not not for my sake. I mean, I'm getting paid. I don't give a shit. But I'd feel bad for that guy. I I eat a lot of asparagus. And, you know, th- that's where I'd say no, right then and there. And then a shot gets fired. You had a hell of a weekend. You know what? You deserve a break. <laughs> Take a day or two off. Just do it. it. It's good for your mental health, yeah? Don't ask me why. Just I, I just call it a hunch. I think you may need to take a bit of a breather. <laughs> I just headbutted the microphone. We're professional here. Wow. This is from KSDK.com. Kind of looks like Kiss Dick. <laughs> it does. If you do a quick glance, you know, over it. KSDK.com. It looks like Kiss Dick. I'm going to call you guys Kiss Dick. It's an NBC affiliate out of, uh, where is it, St. Louis? Okay. Fuck it. I'm going to bookmark your website. So whenever I see an article from you that I like, I can call you Kiss Dick. <laughs> it does. It looks like Kiss Dick. <laughs> I snorted. <laughs> I can count on one hand, probably, the amount of times I've actually snorted on this show. Uh, this is from kissdick.com. <laughs> Workhouse trespassers call 911 for help after locking themselves in a cell. Oh, wonderful. Good job. Great. Police helped free the man from a cell and then arrested him. Did you put him in the same cell? <laughs> Three trespassers had to be rescued by the police Thursday night after accidentally locking themselves in a jail cell inside a shuttered city jail. <laughs> St. Louis Police Spokesperson Sergeant Charles Wall, finally, a normal fucking name. Thank you, Mr. Wall, said off. Thank you, Mr. Wall's mom, actually. Appreciate you, Ms. Lady. Contact me if you're still around and you hear this episode. Send me a message. Sergeant Charles Wall's mom, if you're still around, send me a message. I would like to uh, send you some free No Disclosure merch. No Disclosure merch. Pop socket, hoodie, whatever. And yes, I'm dead fucking serious. Said officers responded to the medium security institution, colloquially known as the Workhouse, after the three men... Why do I give a shit what it's fucking nicknamed? You go through, you have a story this crazy, and then you nickname, you tell us what the nickname for the fucking building is? That's awesome. Why don't you describe the goddamn bathroom while you're at it? The news is stupid. Of course, I'm reading this from a place, KSDK, and they didn't realize it looks like Kiss Dick. Police helped free the man from a cell, then arrested them. Please tell me they're in the same cell that they broke. Okay, wait a minute. There's something I'm not understanding. Why did they break into a fucking jail cell? Oh. Okay, they broke into the jail. What kind of fucking idiot's going to break into a jail for burglary and stealing? The only thing, the only reason I would think to break into a jail is to bail out one of your buddies early, you know what I'm talking about? But then again, you stay the fuck away from the cells because you don't know which ones are going to have those auto doors or whatever. These people are stupid. Close and allegate. What? Whoa. The jail has sat empty for more than a year. The last inmates were moved out in 22. So you broke into a... What? You broke into a shut down building? You broke into a building that's not operational. I don't understand. It was closed amid allegations of inhumane conditions. I can understand if you're wanting to fucking set the place on fire. Steering committee overseeing, what were you doing in there? (laughs) Seriously. You broke into a decommissioned fucking empty ass building. And it's a jail. And you got yourself stuck. Wow. Somebody, (laughs) maybe jail isn't the place they should go. Honestly. Honestly. I'm never. I'm not this kind of guy usually, but uh, here's what I suggest you do. I mean, we have over overcrowding in our jails and prisons anyway. It's a major drain on the taxpayer. It is a problem. We need to take everything on a case by case basis, starting with these people. I think what they should, what we should do, 
is have them start school all over starting at fucking kindergarten. That seems like a perfect thing to do. Now, this is for my for my next article. A little bit of story time, okay? Because you need a bit of a lead up here. I'm not joking, okay? I'm dead serious. You can look this up. This is not this this part is not a joke. There is a gas station, a chain of gas stations in Iowa. I lived in Iowa for nine years, southern Iowa, Corridan. It's kind of like right on the border of Missouri and Iowa, about 45 minutes south of Des Moines. I lived in Iowa for nine years. There was a chain of gas stations in Iowa called Come and Go. <laughs> yes, K-U-M and Go. Come and Go gas stations. It is a thing. Think I'm fucking joking? Look it up. It's real. And we always used to laugh at the name. And I know this is kind of insidey, but I know a lot of my friends back home listen to No Disclosure. You guys are going to love this. And plus, you know, for someone who doesn't know about the come and go gas stations, it's still kind of funny. Do you know why? Because finally, an Iowa City man was accused of masturbating at a local convenience store. Guess which one it was? <laughs> yes, the come and go has finally lived up to its name. <laughs> We used to talk about this when we were in school. We used to talk about this growing up. Somebody needs to get arrested for masturbating at this gas station. Like Someone needs to whack off on the pumps. Somebody's got to spray some just somewhere, at least, so this place earns its name. Nobody had the balls to do it. Thank you, Iowa City man. I had to wait how many years? Over 20. But you know what? Good things come to those who wait. The come and go has finally earned its name. <laughs> Yes, guy was arrested masturbating right there. Muscatine, I know I know this come and go to. I know which one. <laughs> I know this one. I've been there. Never masturbated there. But now I don't need to, which is great. Customers called 911 to report that an unknown male has said sexual things to them and began masturbating in their presence. Ooh, saucy. The victims were able to provide a description of the man identified as 50-year-old Kenneth Kelly of Wayne Avenue. Video surveillance footage reportedly showed Kelly approaching the stores and the victims, whacking off the entire time. Wow, this guy can hold down a conversation and blast it at the same time. That's amazing. But yes, the gas station is called Come and Go. K-U-M and Go. <laughs> That's what makes it funny. And, <laughs> and for my buds in Iowa, the Come and Go has finally earned its name. Is he the first person to probably masturbate at these gas stations? No, guaranteed. Have you ever been to that section of Iowa City? <laughs> That's fucking meth heaven over there. But he's the first guy to at least get arrested masturbating there, as far as what I could see. Because I googled masturbation, come and go gas stations. And boy, the stuff I found. <laughs> but, you know, nothing like this. So this guy's probably the first guy to get arrested doing so. <laughs> Don't Google that, by the way. Don't. It's a rabbit hole that should have its own YouTube video. I found Invader Zim Rule 34 porn. I didn't even know that existed. I knew, I, I, I always thought there were, I, I, that's what I Googled, I, you know, just fucking around, you know. And then, like, just a little bit, not even that far into the image search, I find Invader Zim Rule 34 porn. I always thought there were, you know, it's like, oh, that's funny and everything, that's funny. But I was like, there's no way that anything, that if it's a thing, there's a porn of it. You know, I, I just, I thought there's got to be a limit to it. Nope, ain't no fucking limit to it. I saw Invader Zim Getting jackhammer. Okay, that's it. That I'm not going any further. I'll never look at Gurr the same way again, ever. Now I know what's under that zipper, and I don't like it. Fucked up my childhood. Thank you, Rule 34. This is from scriptsnews.com. Forget Black Friday. Plumbers prepare for Brown Friday. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, if I could guess, this is probably that day after Thanksgiving. When everybody's like clogging up their toilets, shitting their asses off. It is, isn't it? And you're like, you have a million people over at the same house and they're all using the fucking toilet. It is, isn't it? Yep, it is. Do plumbers actually call it that? Because I was just thinking about this the other day. Every place of work you go to, there's a different uh, uh, like rush day of the year, like the biggest day of the year, right? I work in insurance. So my biggest day, days of the year, are that's usually 
around tax time and tornado season. Because that's when every, you know, everything goes ape shit. Grocery store, Thanksgiving, you know, retail stores, Christmas, you know, you know what I mean. Every kind of place has the crazy rush day. I never thought about plumbers though. <laughs> this is yeah, this would probably be the day, right? This is it right here. One of the nation's largest plumbing repair company said it expects to be quite busy the day after Thanksgiving on the day it does Brown Friday. <laughs> Have plumbers always called it this? Has this always been a thing? Because that's awesome. Roto Rooter said it experiences a 50% increase in call volume the day after Thanksgiving. Damn, guys. Shit. Oh, I can understand. I mean, gatherings and meals can overload kitchen sinks, garbage disposals, toilets, main sewers. Extra guests mean extra toilet flushes, shower, dishwasher, laundry loads, garbage disposal usage. Simply put, the gobble day puts a heavy strain on American plumbing systems and it keeps our plumbers super busy for the next day. Oh, I bet. But that's cool. They actually have a name for that. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. <laughs> now, if you need to know, they have a bunch of tips out there to show you how you could not clog up every fucking thing in your house the day after Thanksgiving. I would link it for you or read it for you. But you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to keep plumbers in business. So, you know, continue pooping the way you've been been a pooping. I'm not going to fuck over plumbers like that. Can we do another one? Can we do one more? That one was weird. Brown fry. <laughs> Brown fly. Brown fry. I can't even say it. Brown Friday. That's awesome. Okay, there's a weird Florida. I thought we could do an entire episode without seeing anything Florida in there. I was wrong. But hey, you know we're going to go out with a bang. It's fucking Florida. Something's going to be weird. Strange Florida. No shit. Video shows shark sighting on Florida. What? A shark sighting on a Florida interstate. There's a bull shark. This thing's probably 10 feet long. In the back of a truck. What the fuck? Hollywood, Florida. A news viewer spotted a shark on I-95 Tuesday. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Send in a video of a driver hauling a massive shark. That's a fucking bull shark. The guy hauling was a fisherman transporting his big catch. That is a full-sized fucking bull shark. And it's just in the back of a truck. It's fucking tail fin is dragging on the ground. Okay, wait a minute. Number one, where's your boat? <laughs> I know that you can find bull sharks in just a couple of feet of water. Would you strap chum to your ankles and then just have a fucking grenade or, you know, a spear ready or whatever? Okay, there's no boat. It's just like fucking... <laughs> my God. It just has elastic bands, you know, uh, around the fucking bull shark. Can you, uh, is it legal to even fish for them? Uh, I need to see this. Is that even legal? All bull sharks during the close season of April 1st through June, June 30th must be released. During the open season, which it is now, the limit on bull sharks is one. So apparently, you can catch a bull shark. No shit. No. Okay, a shore-based park. Oh wait, a shore-based shark fishing permit is required for all shore-based shark anglers, 16 and old. You can catch a fucking bull shark. That's legal. That's insane. Those fuckers are aggressive. Aggressive as hell. That's crazy. Wow. Well, there you go. I learned something. But this is still weird. <laughs> this bull shark is huge. I'm telling you, this fucker's a 10 footer, and there's no boat. <laughs> It's just in the back of a truck. Florida. You guys you, you guys just never cease to impress me, man. That's awesome. There's always something going down in fucking Florida. I love it. Anyway, that is all we got, okay? That's all friends. <laughs> we got to leave on a good note here. Special thanks to this week's sponsors who make this show possible. Make sure to check out the link to our Patreon page in this episode's description, where as little as a dollar a month, you can get everything from bonus episodes, ad-free episodes, giveaways of certain tiers, outtakes, bloopers, and a podcast just for the patrons. Who the hell does that? This guy. Special thanks to the patrons, by the way. The Kunkel Homestead YouTube channel, Donald Haynes, Dillagoff, Kristen Belt. I just did a giveaway recently. 
I uh, designed and 3D printed my own version of the Aztec Death Whistle. Dillagaff just won one in a drawing. Yeah, I do giveaways. So fucking sign up, man. And you support the show. There's no price of admission to listen to No Disclosure. But if you ever want to do that little extra, yeah, it helps out. Bye-bye, my babies. I love you all. And be fancy. <laughs> Tailfin fucking dragging on the ground. That's like... <laughs> That's like a perfect representation of my fucking life right there. That's how I'm, it is. There's a, a bull shark fucking basically zip tied to the bed of a truck, tail dragging on the ground. It's a mystery, yeah. But it depending on you know because like based on where it is, Florida makes perfect fucking sense. That's my life right there. That is a photo of my life. Confiscated evidence, no smoking gun. Nothing happened.